welcome back. So, today we are going for the concluding lecture of module 2. So, in the previous lecture we have seen the Gibbs entropy equation and in today's lecture what we will do, we will study an important factor that is the fluctuation in properties. In this case we will consider about the fluctuation in energy specifically for the monoatomic gas. So, uh, our primary focus is to study the fluctuation in total energies because what we are going to see here is we are talking always about the number of molecules, the constraint volume and the temperature. But this energy is therefore been actually been in contact if you remember correctly from thermal reservoir to the subsystem it is continuously in contact. So, there may be some fluctuation in the total energy. So, we have to quantify this fluctuation and also have to see how it affects with the number of molecules. Then we will go with some problems and discuss some problems and then I will round it up for the module 2. So, the transfer of energy as I told you between the system and the bath is a continuous process. So, it is important to analyze and estimate the range of energy fluctuation that is likely to occur. So, how does this energy changes when the energy fluctuates? So, that we will study. So, it is necessary to make the assumption that the distribution of potential energy. So, for example, there are energy states of the particular system. So, we assume all the energy states follow a Gaussian or a normal distribution. For example, if you assume a Gaussian distribution, we can write a distribution f x f x equals to 1 upon sigma root of 2 pi e to the power of minus half into x minus mu by sigma whole square. Okay. So, here sigma is your the standard deviation as you have been knowing the standard deviation So, standard deviation is something which is a distribution which talks about the breadth of the distribution, how narrow or how sharp the distribution is. Okay. So, the standard distribution. Then you have the mean. So, you know mean is means the average value is the mean of the distribution, mean of the distribution. Then you have x, x is obviously a dimensionless number, it is a dimensionless number, dimensionless number ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, we are trying to put the entire energy in terms of this Gaussian distribution. So, we have to see whether this Gaussian distribution is normalized. So, what we do is we check whether it is normalized or not. So, we take this function and we took the integral of this. Let us suppose the integral of this going from minus infinity to plus infinity because that is where your x varies from. So, you try to do a uh, integral over this distribution. So, we have written the distribution in the previous slide. So, I will write down the distribution e to the power of minus half of x minus mu by sigma whole square. Okay. This is the distribution. So, if I write x, so it will, it will be dx. So, we are trying to integrate this function from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, if you do that, I can write this in this manner also minus infinity to plus infinity and 1 upon sigma upon root 2 pi. Then what you have is e to the power of minus half of x minus mu by sigma whole square and we write here as d into x minus mu. Everything remains the same in place of dx, I write here d of x minus mu. Okay. Once we write that, what we get is if I simplify this is 1 upon root pi, 1 upon root pi then minus infinity to plus infinity, you have e to the power of minus half into x minus mu by sigma whole square. Okay. And then d, I just replace this derivative term dx minus mu, I am writing here as d of 
1 upon root 2 into x minus mu by sigma okay now assume y is equal to 1 by root 2 into x minus mu by sigma so you assume another variable y which is a function of x and then you substitute the value of y in this expression so what you get is you will get is here is the entire integral will change from x to y so we started with this integral 1 upon sigma root of 2 pi e to the power of minus half upon x minus mu by sigma whole square into dx so we change this into this 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power of minus y square into dy so this is very easy to evaluate okay in terms of y so if you do that the final value takes the form 2 upon root pi of 0 to infinity i have converted into integral from minus infinity to plus infinity to 0 to infinity if i do that i give this expression so this is nothing but 2 by root pi because this is the integral is equal to unity so it only becomes 2 by root pi and in this integral because you get exactly root pi by 2 okay i'm sorry it is not unity the value of this integral is root pi by 2 so you get unity overall the overall value is unity so this value is we know the integral of e to the power of minus x square dx 0 to infinity is root pi by 2 so you get unity so the entire distribution is normalized so if there is any function you take the function fx as a normal or gaussian distribution apply limits from minus infinity to plus infinity you will get as unity so that is our prime objective to ensure the distribution is normalized or this is unity so with this distribution set we can define some properties or terms for example we define the term average value average value is something like you have energies if you take the average value of the energy it becomes internal energy so let us see what is you mean by average value any average value it means if i know this average value so it will be of any function gx the average value will be g bar of x okay so this will be the average function so if you write this average function with respect to the function gx so this takes the form minus infinity to plus infinity you write the function gx into fx into dx so you multiply the function with fx fx is the gaussian or normal distribution this is the way you write the average value so this we have already seen what is this function 1 upon sigma of root 2 pi upon minus infinity to plus infinity then you have gx into e to the power of minus half of x minus mu by sigma whole square to dx so this is the entire term so x is the dimensionless variable takes the form minus infinity to plus infinity mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation so any property can be expressed as an average value which is given in this expression so the standard deviation you must be knowing this formula what is this this is nothing but mu minus x average of mu minus x so this average of mu minus x if you square it this will be the standard deviation so this takes the form which is if i write in terms of x bar it is this minus this upon okay you take the square of it so sigma square is equal to mu minus x square and then you have this bar over it which is nothing but mu i can i have replaced by x bar so it is x bar minus x raised to the power of 2 this further can be broken and written as x square bar minus x bar square so this will be the variance of the distribution
variance of the distribution okay so this is one function so it means like if this is a function it means that for the distribution the probability of finding a system in a state for example what is the probability of finding a system it means if i define the distribution of the system as in the this form this this function fx then you have probability for having a system in a state in which x lies between mu minus 0 0.674 sigma mu plus 0 0.674 sigma that is equal to 50 percent. So, the probability of observing a state of a system where x lies between these two upper and lower bounds is 50 percent. Same way the probability of finding a system mu minus sigma mu plus sigma upper and lower bounds this is 68.28 percent and then you have the probability mu minus 3 sigma mu plus 3 sigma is equal to 99.73 percent okay so these are different uh, ways where you can locate the system so if your system dimensionless value is between these two lower and upper bounds you have a 50 percent chance of observing that state if your x lies between mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma you have 68.27 percent chance of observing that state similarly for mu minus 3 sigma and mu plus 3 sigma you have almost 100 percent observing that state this is what it means if you apply a gaussian distribution now with this we are able to now distinguish the fluctuation so now we can define what is fluctuation energy for a canonical ensemble so as before let us write down the definition first then we will write the so as i told you the average value is e bar which is nothing but the internal energy is equal to 3 by 2 nkt this we know already and the cv we know as equal to 3 by 2 nk so these two thermodynamic property we have already obtained from the previous lecture so we know that the variable in the gaussian distribution is dimensionless so we need to define a di dimensionless number in order to apply that distribution so what is that dimensionless number your dimensionless number will be given by x so x will be the instantaneous value of energy divided by 3 by 2 nkt okay so some instantaneous value e can be a value at any instant of time so that x bar the mean of this value will be you apply e bar on to it by 3 by 2 n k t so e bar is nothing but your internal energy so it will be u by 3 n k t by 2 now what is this you know u is equal to 3 by 2 n k t that is your average energy the inclined energy so both the numerator and denominator is same so it will be unity okay so now with this we can write down the variance so what is the variance expression as i told you it is x bar minus x whole square again to the power of bar so if i write down it means we will have e bar minus e by 3 n k t by 2 so this is whole squared to find the variance okay so this will be your variance so what uh, let us simplify this expression so if i open this numerator so it will be e square minus 2 e e bar plus e square by 3 okay now let us open the brackets so it will be e square bar minus 2 e bar dot e bar plus e square bar sorry this will be e square bar so these two are different 
so this is e square and on top of there is bar and this is a bit different e bar then square so these two are different you take the e square value then put a mean on it and then another one is you take the mean and just square it okay so these two are different then the numerator will be as it is now simplify it further so you will get e square bar minus 2 because this e bar e bar is same so when it's apply so if you apply a bar on top of e bar it's the e bar only and it is again on this is e bar so it will be 2 e bar square plus e square bar by 3 by 2 into nkt whole square okay simplifying it further means you will have you will deduct one of them so you will get is finally e square bar minus e bar square by 3 by 2 nkt whole square so this will be your sigma square this will be your variance so our next objective is to distinguish this value which is in the lhs this value and write in terms of the internal energy definition so we will do that we will expand on this distribution and see if we can make a difference or if we can relate this variance with number of molecules so we write here sigma square 1 upon 3 nkt by 2 so your uh, denominator remains the same only what i will do is i'll try to do some maths and rearrange this numerator term in terms of summation so it i will write down the expression first then i will discuss i states by q minus e i by k t this whole square by q whole square the bracket closes so it means what I am doing is I am just writing out the expression for e square bar and e bar square. So this is e square bar and e bar square. Now you see the difference. It means I am multiplying the instantaneous value of energy into this exponential term then I am taking a summation. But here when I talk of e bar square it means I am taking the average value of e i and then taking the square of it. So, I am taking the e i, the instantaneous value of e i multiplying by the exponential term, then I am taking the square. So, that is why it is both these terms are different. So, this if you recollect we did this discussion earlier that is 1 upon q by dou q by dou t or this actually comes from dou ln q by dou t. So, this I can write down as 1 upon q upon dou of dou t summation i or j whatever you want to write. In this case, it is i minus k t and which is again equal to 1 upon q upon summation of e to the power of minus e i by k t. So, all is across all i, all the states of the system into e i by k t square and this we found out to be u by k t square. This we have carried out in the Gibbs entropy equation when we did the derivation. So, my question is in this case what you can do is try to take out this expression and put everything the expression number 1 
in terms of derivatives of partition function with respect to temperature. Can we put this bracketed term in term? Yes, if you do the mathematics correctly, you can write this sigma square as 1 upon 3 n k t 2 by whole square. I am not doing the mathematics here, but I will leave it to you as exercise. So, it will be k t square by square into q double derivative n v plus 2 k t square 2 k t whole square into t by q then you have dou q by dou t. I am trying to just reconnect with the partial derivative of partition function with respect to temperature. So, you will get this expression basically and this is direct you can write down this is k t square k t square whole square by q square dou q by dou t whole square by n v ok. So, I will leave you an exercise to find out from here how you can substitute the value of derivative of the partition function with respect to temperature in this expression. Now, if you recollect we also obtained the expression for C v, C v we know it is equal to 2 k t by q into dou q by dou t plus k t square by q. minus k t square by q square into dou q by dou t whole square. So, this expression we have already obtained. Now, see the expressions number 2 for example, if, um, number 2 and this is 3. Compare these terms, compare the like terms. So, what will we get? Can we make a distinction or can we make a similarity between expressions 2 and 3? Yes, we can. So, we will build upon that and what we get is simply C v, I can write down C v as equals to 2 k t upon q dou q by dou t v into n plus k t square by q upon I am just writing this C V equation again that is nothing new I am doing plus minus k t square whole square by q square into dou q by dou t whole square. So, if you see if I relate that to equation you will get sigma square equal to k t square C V by 3 n k t by 2 whole square or I will get k t square 3 n k by 2 by 3 n k t by 2 whole square. So, if you do the mathematics here correctly you will get 2 upon 3 n or sigma is equal to root of 2 upon 3 n. So, this is a very important outcome of uh, this exercise. So, we see the variance is equal to root of what 2 by 3 into n. So, let us build up upon this expression. So, if you see there is a constant that is square root of root by 2 by 3 this constant is specifically applicable to ideal monoatomic gas, but the inverse relation with the square root it can be said it is a more of a general characteristic of fluctuation. So, any fluctuation you will be referring to will be somewhat a inverse relation with the number of particles. It is for example, if you know when you have this uh, uh, elections some um, exit polls uh, flashed onto your television screen nowadays it is very common. So, always they will say that uh, this particular 
votes or particular number of seats is plus minus some error. So, that plus minus some error will depend upon your sample size. So, if your sample size is let us say 1000, so it is something like that the your uncertainty of your prediction number of seats will be plus minus root over so that particular number. So, that is sample size root over 1 upon sample size. So, if you do root by 2 by 3 into number of sample size you will get plus minus uncertainty. So, that is what the sample size comes, but the, it has to be taken care like the sample size when you are collecting this should not be biased. So, you know if you go to any of the sample size means when you are doing with different people or voters. So, you should cover all classes of voters those who are living in cities or in uh, villages or in municipalities all those types you have to take up so that you do not have any bias in your sampling. Okay. So, you do not take only the particular uh, polls within the village or within the city or within the municipality you take all of them then only your uncertainty will hold true. So, that is where this uncertainty plus minus uncertainty comes whenever you do this sampling. So, in this case also in our case of monoatomic gas also again sampling. So, if you take a small sample size 5 you see root over 2 by 3 into 5 this is a very high uncertainty. But if you go towards the mole of atoms then you see it since it is inversely proportional this percentage will go down drastically. So, as the number of particles of the system increases the variance or the uncertainty decreases. So, as you have more and more number of particles your uncertainty in the energy values decreases. So, we can say that the relationship between the number of molecules in a system and the percentage fluctuation in its property is such that as the number of molecules increases the percentage fluctuation decreases. So, let us now find out what is that fluctuation. So, we find now we started with some probability distribution. So, we have also obtained that the probability distribution is Gaussian in nature. Now, now let us write down this particular distribution. So, if you write the particular distribution, so it means I will write a probability of locating a state of energy E that is nothing but the distribution function in terms of dimensionless variable. We will come to see how we define the dimensionless distribution. So, this is nothing but we already have it will be 3 by 4 pi n e to the power of minus half of bracket open then e by 3 by 2 n k t minus 1 by root of 3 by 2 into n square. Now, this particular definition comes from this expression if I want to write in terms of p x. So, p x is nothing but 1 upon sigma root of 2 pi e to the power of minus half x minus mu by sigma whole square. Okay. So, now here we know that uh, your sigma is equal to root over 2 by 3 n. So, what I am doing is here sigma I am substituting with root over 2 over 3 by n. So, if I do that I will get this expression and the dimensionless property I am mentioning is x and what is x? x is nothing but it is numerator in E by denominator in the average value of energy. So, if then the mu of that x is 1 actually. So, that is why this is x e to the power of 3 by 2 n k t this is x minus mu mu is this mu. If you apply a mu on this part the first part of this expression that is equal to unity. So, that is why 1 comes here. Then this sigma square I have taken it outside. So, sigma square means it is you go to the reverse it will be 3 n by 2 whole square. So, it is 3 by 2 whole square. So, I can write down what is the probability of locating a particular energy let us say it will be E equals to n e to the power of minus half into. So, this I am writing as a function so that I can do the expression f 
so that this is equal to okay so this is a dimensionless number then becomes because i told you i had to give a dimensional number called x i am writing here a dimensionless number similar to x so it means if i want to locate a particular energy state where e is equal to 3 by 2 n k t okay suppose i want to locate that state so what is the probability i will get this state so it will be nothing but root of 3 by 4 pi into n okay so it means because if you write here 3 by 2 n k t so this is become this value will become unity so this is 1 minus 1 it is 0 so e to the power of minus 0 the entire term second term becomes 1 so it is only 3 by 4 pi into n so if you have the number of atoms with you so that will be giving you the probability so what is the probability of locating that state which has the energy as 3 by 2 n k t now so it means probability of any state then i can write down the probability of state at 3 by 2 n k t so this root over 3 by 4 pi into n is nothing but probability of locating a state with energy 3 by 2 n k t into this term the exponential term this is the way you write the probability c okay this is the way you write the probability so this is a very important term this will give you an access to the probability distribution so let us see what does this mean so what they do is for example if i ask what is the probability i am able to locate an energy with a value of 1 point let's say 0001 of into 3 by 2 n k t so what is that probability as compared to the probability of observing a state of equal to 3 by 2 n k t so it means what is the probability that my value of energy deviates by 0.1 percent as compared to to the probability average value that is 3 by 2 n k t so if you see if you do the maths correctly it will be minus to the power of minus 1 0 0.0001 into the root of 3 n by 2 then whole square so if you do the maths correctly it will be e to the power of minus half it into 9.5 it will turn to the power of 7 this is a very big number then again whole squared okay okay it will be whole squared so if you this you see this will be close to e to the power of minus 4.515 into 10 to the power of 15 okay so this is a very uh, so large number almost like unity so it was very uh, probable that you will be able to see the number okay so then what happens is this is all about a single atom here n i have put in as one single atom now if it is not a single atom how will this probability look so what we will do we will plot the fractional deviation to for the total energy that is the dimensionless number with respect to probability density for different number of molecules let's say if you have a number so if i plot here two axes let's say this axis is so this is nothing but e upon 3 by 2 n k t minus 1 okay this is the value okay so if i plot it in this manner and this is suppose this is the probability density sorry this is not it will not be one this is only this e upon 3 by 2 n k t now the issue is here you will be having zero so idea is your distribution breadth so if this is the negative values it is minus 0 0.1 this is plus 0 0.1 like this it keeps on going so when you have a number of molecules n equal to 1 
you will be having something like this. So, the distribution breadth is very wide. So, you will have energies lying to the various distribution, a wider distribution. Same thing when you have for number of molecules as 100, you keep on decreasing this width. So, if this is the 0, it will be something like this. But when you have close to 1 lakh molecules, then it will be a simply a single line across 0. So, it will be something like this. Now, observe these 3. So, you have n equal to 1, 1 molecule or 1 atom, 100 molecules, 1 lakh molecules. For 1 molecule, you see the distribution is pretty wide. Okay. So, the uncertainty is very high. Here, as you increase the number of molecules to 100, the uncertainty is bit low than 1, but still it is considerable. Now, keep on increasing the number of molecules. Then you will see this delta value will keep and keep becoming narrower. So, it means as you go with the number of molecules higher and higher, your this dimensionless number becomes smaller and smaller and it does not extend beyond 0. So, that is what it says, it is the fractional distribution of the energies. So, more the wider it is the plot, more is the uncertainty, lesser and narrower the distribution, that is more is the probability of locating that particular energy state. Okay, now, let us see the probability of energy fluctuation. So, we already have an expression for probability distribution. Now, let us see how the probability density varies with a particular relative factor which I will define here. So, I will define a relative factor that is by this symbol. So, this symbol will something be defined as E bar upon 3 by 2 n k t okay, minus 1. So, this is one factor. So, what is the fractional change in distribution of energy with respect to the average energy. So, if you see these values will be the fractional value means what is the deviation? It will give you the deviation with respect to probability distribution. For example, if I want to write down let us say for a probability, if I want to compute for a probability of the molecule, for example, let us consider a single atom or single molecule that is having 0 0.001 percent or 1.001 percent, 0.1 percent across is average energy with respect to its probability that that particular atom is having an energy equal to our average energy that is 3 by 2 n k t. So, this is how we write. So, this is 0.1 percent that what is the probability that the particular helium atom or whatever the monoatomic atom will be lying with the energy let us say it is 0.001 percent of its average value as compared to the probability that particular atom will have a energy equal to the internal energy. So, this is that expression if I take this you will get e to the power of minus half by then you will have. So, it will be only 0.0001 left. So, you will be having 0.0001 into remaining all things will catch, then you will have only the 3 by 2 into n, this factor, 3 by 2 n whole square. So, this is the relation. So, what I did was I wrote down the expressions for probability for 0.1 percent, probability for 100 percent. So, uh, that is equal to nothing but exponential term minus half. So, this if I take it correctly, so it will be close to uh, you know this will be e to the power of minus half into 9.503 into 10 to the power of 7 whole square. Okay. So, if I take n as Avogadro's number, okay. if I do that then uh, this expression takes the form e to the power of minus 4.515 into 10 to the power of 15. So, now you see the value is almost 
close to you know e to the power of 1. So, the probability is very less, the probability expression is very less because e to the power of minus a very huge number is given. Oh, so, the it is the value of this probability is pretty high. So, like this if I can write out this expression instead of this way I will define a fractional deviation from the average energy and then make a plot with respect to number of molecules. For example, if I plot here the average value distribution which is 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and here you have 0 0.1 minus 0 0.2 like that and this probability distribution I will write as p. So, this distribution value will be different for different cases. For example, if I take n equal to 1 the values of probability will be very less. Okay. So, then what you do is if you put here n equal to 1 you will get a distribution something like this. So, this will peak around 0 and the x axis then becomes this fractional deviation from average energy. So, if you see the breadth is pretty much wider at all points. Now, what you do you keep on increasing this n let us suppose n you keep as 100 for example then this y axis will also be changing. So, you will have the fractional distribution here probability here. So, this particular point 0. So, if suppose this is a negative axis and this is a positive axis. So, this will become smaller and smaller the width will become smaller and smaller. Okay. Now, if you take n equal to 100 and if I take let us say I take n equal to 1 lakh for example, your probability distribution values will be centered mostly around this 0 axis. So, this probability if I draw it will be something like a straight line you know. So, the distribution gets narrower and narrower as you increase the number of particles or atoms. So, you start from n 1 the width is the maximum here then n equal to 100 width decreases and n goes to 1 lakh the width is almost negligible and if you go for n equal to Avogadro's numbers so it almost becomes a straight line indicates that the overall energy or the average energy of that assembly of atom is equal to its internal energy which is 3 by 2 nkt in terms of monoatomic gases. So, this is the way the probability distribution is plotted with respect to fractional change in their energy values. So, we now move over to some problems. So, let us see the first problem. In this problem you are asked to calculate the numerical value of the canonical partition function for a single helium atom in a cubical box of edge 1 centimeter and the probability of finding the helium atom in a single energy level corresponding to the mean kinetic energy of the molecule at 300 Kelvin. So, if I want to make it simpler it means you have to first find out the canonical partition function of a helium atom at the temperature of 300 Kelvin within a cubical box of 1 centimeter. First you have to find out Q. So, in this case no information is given with respect to electronic or nuclear partition function. So, if nothing is given for nuclear partition function you can assume unity, but in the case of electronic partition function because it is helium. So, we can assume the degeneracy of the ground state electronic states of helium atom to be unity. So, that particular assumption if we assume and we start so we write down the first we write down what is Q. So, Q you know is we have already studied this because I have written here small q because it talks about a helium atom single atom. If it is assembly of atom it will be capital Q. So, it is H s square V and we assume the ground state electronic degeneracy to be representing the electronic partition function. So, I write here electronic state 1 and same for nuclear ground state 1. So, now what you can do is we can assume this omega 1 as unity so as omega nuclear 1 as unity. The nuclear partition function the ground state genesis is unity because I told you it just appears in a extra constant. So, you can assume it as unity because mostly it cancels out. So, but the electronic ground state we assume to be the ground state values or ground state degeneracy. So, ground state degeneracy in the case of helium atom it has been said there is no degeneracy for helium atom. So, 
you will have a single unity. So, the reason what they have given is that all the electrons fill the 1s orbital. So, all the electrons fill the 1s orbital, 1s orbital such that the spin is such that the spin of the electrons are non-degenerate. So, it means all the electrons fill the helium atom 1s orbital such that the spin of the electrons are non-degenerate. So, it means if the electron spin are non-degenerate, its ground state degeneracy is unity that is the reason. But uh, we will be giving explicitly these values in terms of problems in assignments or in your exam. So, you just for your explanation, we can assume from the definition of chemistry for helium atom, we can assume that to be as unity. So, if you proceed just now substitute all the values, you keep m as the mass molecular mass and if you recollect, we actually wrote this expression capital Q is nothing but 2 pi m k t. So, this expression we have already written as 1.88 into 10 to the power of 20 into m t 3 by 2, but the units will be in centimeter minus cube. Okay, centimeter minus cube. So, oh, sorry, I have given a 3 by 2, this is not here. So, it is 3 by 2 into centimeter minus cube. So, this takes care of all the constants. Now, this m I have taken outside, and that is why this 3 by 2 comes here. m and t both have been taken outside 3 by 2, and you know this m is the molecular mass in grams, t is in Kelvin. So, you have to find out, but this is centimeter minus cube, so it is q by v. So, now you have to find out what is v. So, v we will find out the way we did earlier, it is nothing but follows ideal gas law because helium atom is ideal gas because it is a monoatomic gas. So, you substitute all the values because I have written here single atom. So, with single atom n is equal to 1, you put here 8.314 into 10 to the power of minus 5 bar per meter cube. into 300 Kelvin. So, if I suppose basic because it is done per mole, so uh, I will write here 1 mole. So, it is a single atom. So, if you write that you will get equal to close to 0 0.025 meter cube. You get the valve volume. Now, you can substitute all the values in this expression 1. You will get Q as equal to 7. 8 to 10 to the power of 24. This is the value of partition function you will be getting for a single helium atom. So, this you will be requiring later. Now, this is the first part. We calculate the numerical value of the canonical partition for a single helium atom. The second part says that what is the probability of finding the helium atom. So, what is the probability I can see this or observe this particular helium atom in a single energy level but the average energy is 3 by 2 n k t. So, it means I have to write this expression. So, probability of obtaining for a single is equal to E minus q. So, it means what will be this E value? This E value will be equal to E will be equal to nothing but 3 by 2 n k t because I have been asking what is the probability of observing the helium atom and the average value? The average value we know for energy of a monoatomic gas is 3 by 2 nkt. So, you just substitute E by minus 3, this is 3 by 2 nkt. So, this will take the form minus of 3 by 2 nkt by kt by q. Now, the expression here takes the form this kt, kt cancels out, n is 1. So, you just have minus 3 by 2 by q e to the power of minus 3 by 2 by q. So, if you see this value 
if you do with respect to q is given here, so it is almost negligible that is close to 0 because e to the power of minus 1 y 5 by such a big huge number is almost close to 0. So, it means the chances of observing a helium atom, the chances of observing a helium atom at this temperature, the temperature is 300 Kelvin is almost 0. So, you cannot see a helium atom at 300 Kelvin with its mean kinetic energy that is 3 by 2 n k t. We move ahead. Now, the same problem for the previous problem, you also calculate the probability of finding the helium atom within an energy range of plus minus 1 percent. So, okay, I cannot observe it at exactly at 3 by 2 n k t, but what is the chance that I can observe it at within plus or minus of that value plus or minus 1 percent of that value. So, for that you have to write the probability distribution, you have to write the probability distribution and integrate across the fraction of energy from minus 1 to 1 percent. So, if I write in terms of expression, so you will get probability. So, if I write here E value to be between 0 0.99 E bar and 1.01 .01 E bar. So, this is what it means the energy of the helium atom is between minus 1 percent to plus 1 percent. The expression takes the form. So, you take the integral, you take it from 0 0.99 E bar to 1.01 .01 E bar, the probability function distribution into d e. So, this you know it is nothing but 0 0.99 e bar by 1.01 .01 e bar into this expression. This expression is exponential term by partition function. So, it will be e to the power of minus e by k t by q into, now you can do this. So, you substitute e, you do the integral from minus 0.99, sorry it is not minus 0.99, it is only 0 0.99. So, if you do this integral correctly, you will reach a value which is close to 9.76 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So, you will have some probability within plus or minus 1 percent, but that is also very, very less. It is 0 0.00976 percent. That is the probability of observing a helium atom across a uh, energy range from plus 1 percent to minus 1 percent of its average value. So, this is how you compute the probability. So, we come to the third problem. The third problem talks about a polymer chain. The polymer chain has two different types of monomers, the helix type monomers and the coil type monomers. In this question, we are said that there are n monomer units, each of which can either be a helix or a coil state. So, helix and coil state name are given as per its shape. So, the issue is here we are given the energies. The energy of a helix monomer is given as E h and the energy of a coiled monomer is given E c. Assuming that the conformation of each monomer unit is independent of all other monomer units, determine the average fraction of monomers that are in the helix state as a function of a dimensionless temperature. So, what does that mean? It means that you have let us say some monomers of coil state and some monomer of helix state. So, what is the fraction of those which are in helix state as a total number of monomers? You are asked to find out and you are also asked to find out in terms of dimensionless temperature. So, we will consider this entire system as the sum of helix cum coiled monomers. So, initially the total number of monomers if I want to write down, let us suppose the total number of monomers is n. Okay, n. So, in this n monomers, let us suppose you have n minus n small n number of helix state monomers and n minus n of coiled monomers. So, if you have these type of monomers, so what will be the total energy E? the E will be then be equal to N into energy state of individual helix monomer plus capital N minus N energy state of coiled monomers. So, this is the total energy. 
Now, next question comes, how many possible ways you can arrange these monomers? So, what that is nothing but your permutation and combination. So, if you write down, since they are independent of each other, so that will be n factorial by n factorial by n minus n factorial. So, these are the various possible ways you can arrange this n and n minus n number of monomers. So, this in terms analogically can be drawn and analogy can be drawn with respect to degeneracy. Then if you have gone with this number of possible ways, now we are in a state we can write the entire partition function. So, what is that entire partition function of a polymer chain? So, if these are the number of ways, you can write and assume these to be the degeneracy. So, you can write here q is equal to summation. Now, you have to do a summation, summation across n goes from 1 to capital N. So, this combinations will be as it is. Then you have a exponential term with a negative sign n number of helix monomers and n minus n numbers of coiled monomers divided by k t. Okay? So, this is a very important conclusion. So, we are able to write out the partition function for the entire polymer chain. So, E h, E c are the energies of an individual monomer. Now, from definition by binomial expression, I can write out an expression which is equal to m goes to goes to 0 to n n factorial Okay. So, this expression is nothing but x plus y into their sum of all the exponents which is nothing but x plus y to the power of n sorry x plus y to the power of n. So, we rewrite this expression 1 in terms of this binomial expression. So, what you do is you can uh, keep the term which is coming in the degeneracy as it is and just play around with the exponential term. So, if you play around with the exponential term, this takes the form n goes from 1 to n, n factorial to n factorial by n minus n factorial. Okay. This when, so now what you can do, you can separate out the variables. So, here I am writing here as E h by k t to the power of n into exponential of e to the power of e c by k t to the power of n minus n. Now, look up the expression and look up the expression 2 and 3. Compare expression 2 and 3. See, now x can take the form minus e h by k t and y can take the form minus e c by k t. So, it means this entire expression then becomes based on the binomial term it will simply become x plus y by n. So, what is x here? x is here e h by k t and what is y here? It is minus e c by k t. Okay? So, in this case, yeah, I am sorry, the ex entire exponential term will be the x. So, it will be exponential plus So, x plus y. So, it means this is your x and this is your y. The entire term becomes x. So, if you do that raised to the power of n plus n minus n, small n cancels out what you are left is capital N. So, this is one important conclusion. So, this I can write down as equation 4. This gives us a direct way of computing the partition function from the individual energies of coiled and helix state. Now, we are asked to find out what is the fraction of average fraction of monomers that are in the helix state. So, for that we have to write the probability values. The probability of finding a polymer having n probability probability of 
finding a polymer with n helix monomers because there can be many combination we can be n it can be n minus 1 n minus 2 like that so n can take all the values so what is the probability of locating exactly n helix monomers so that is what we will write out so that expression is nothing but if i to write in terms of probability it will be probability of locating n monomers so it will be 1 upon q then the exponential term multiplied by the degeneracy. So, it is exactly the same expression which we have written earlier n factorial by n factorial by n minus n factorial into the exponential term. Exponential term remains as it is E of, so this will be multiplied by small n, then this will be multiplied by capital N into minus n E C by K D. Okay. So, this will be the uh, locating exactly n number of helix monomers. So, exactly n number of helix monomers means we have to do a summation on this. So, uh, you have a q here. So, now we have to find the average value, average fraction. What is that average fraction? n bar. So, n bar is nothing but you will have to write down all the values of n starting from 1 to n. So, n takes 1, 2, 3, 4 like that up to capital N, all possible values of n you multiply with the this probability this is the average value so now you can just write out the expression here so 1 by q then what i will do you have a summation here in this summation i just multiply with n factorial everything remains the same then i will tell you what is the next step Now I have n here and n here. What I will do? I will write this n, write cancel out, and I put here n minus one. So I do that step. So this becomes one upon q summation of n goes from one to n capital N. So what I will do? I'll take n outside. So this n and this n cancels out. So I will write down here n minus n minus one factorial by n minus 1 factorial into factorial into exponential e h by k t n into exponential e c by k t into n minus n ok. So, what I did nothing I cancelled out n so, it will be n minus 1 factorial and I wrote n factorial as n into n minus 1 factorial. Now, in the next step, I somehow want to relate it to the binomial expression. So, I need to be careful with the powers. The powers here it says it should be n minus 1 factorial. So, n minus 1 factorial. So, what I can do is I can take n outside, the capital N outside. Then I can write down the entire expression. So, let us do that capital N outside if I keep. So, it will be capital N totally goes outside. And what I am left inside is, and also I will take one of this term exponential because I want to make this n minus 1 factorial, I want then I have to make the factor as n minus 1. So, I will take out one of this factor outside. So, exponential of minus e h by k t, okay. Then summation remains the same. So, n I have taken outside, this will be n minus 1 factorial. exponential since I took one of the term outside this will be n minus 1 into exponential this will be as it is ok. So, I have taken one factor from here outside it becomes n minus 1. So, this is then nothing but you have we know n and we know q what is q we let us write it is exponential of minus e h by k t plus exponential of minus e c by k t 
to the power of n and then this term will come as it is exponential now look up this term so this again fit the bill of the binomial expression where your x and y are given and the powers are also given n minus 1 plus n minus 1 so if you see what is that expression it will be this will become x and again this will become y so your x and y terms remains the same as before only the powers have changed plus exponential e to the power of by so what is this n minus 1 plus n minus n so n and n cancels out it will be only having n minus 1 here you have n minus 1 okay so now you have three expressions so we can cancel out the denominator with the numerator so only one term will remain so it will be simply n bar is equal to n into exponential e h by k t then I am the so it is n and n minus 1 so only exponential term will be there exponential ok so we come up with the average value fraction for helix polymers so that is the total number of monomers into the exponential of the energy part divided by the summation of the exponential of energy part now what you do is you divide this numerator with the denominator we will do that in the next step so before we do that we can also do a similar exercise for the coiled state in this case the coiled state you have n minus n the average number will be simply equal to then n capital n exponential minus e c by k t by exponential of minus e h by k t plus exponential by minus e c by k t that is it exactly the same expression only it will be e c n e h so let us now write that again expression so what i will do that expression which we have got is this so just i am rewriting the equation so what i will do i will just divide this numerator with the denominator if you do that only n stays in the numerator and uh, you will have it is 1 because it divides exactly with the first term and the second term you will have exponential of minus of e c minus e h by k t ok or I can write down this in terms of dimensionless temperature exponential of minus 1 upon t star so what is here t star t star or if I want to write 1 upon t star is better way to write it down it is nothing but E c minus E h by k t. So this is the dimensionless temperature this so we are able to express n bar the average fraction of those monomers in the helix state is equal to in terms of dimensionless temperature so if you know the total number of monomers 1 plus exponential term will give this fraction so this is how you apply the concepts of statistical mechanics or thermodynamics for example in this case the canonical partition function in evaluating the average value of those monomers in helix and coil state so we will be doing similar problems later on so today we will stop here so as before you please go through this Sandler's book where derivation of all the monoatomic gas are given including the entropy expression and how to compute the basic canonical partition function just one keep in mind that you should be very well equipped with the units so you have to check whether the units are consistent if it is not consistent you will give erroneous results so that is what you need to ensure.
थैंक यू